Tam Jeevitam Seyo Seyavanta Sajayi It is better to live a single day with a virtuous and a self-disciplined life than to live a hundred days uh, with immoral and uh, without any training of our mind. So this is the same of the Buddha you can find in the Dhammapada. It is better to live a single day uh, with uh, virtues and also with some uh, training of our mind uh, and then to live hundred hundred years without any moral behavior and with no training in our mind. So that gives me an idea how what how good if we can really spend a day uh, which can we, we can really be happy about ourselves. And there could be people who live long years in their life without really uh, doing any spiritual development for themselves, at the same time not doing any benefit to the society and others, and even not treating environment well. So live that kind of life, uh, even they can live for a hundred years, that doesn't going to uh, benefit even other people and even for, for himself. So what really matters is not really the, the years that we live, the length that we live, what really matters is that the quality of our life. I mean, even we live in a very short period of time, how much spiritual development that we have actually during that time, or what kind of benefits that we have given to the society during the US day, that is going to be the important uh, thing for us to reflect, not the years, not the length. And, uh, you, you, you should be a person that you can be happy one day when you when the day comes for you to live this world, live this life, and you have to be happy that I am living this life as a better person than I was already born. That is the real achievement in any person's life. Maybe you know we we can I mean we have various. Uh, all spectrums about our success, you know, in terms of our career, in terms of status, in terms of fame, in terms of wealth, and all other things. Of course, there are, there are, uh, the, those things are success in life. But uh, um, meanwhile, we are achieving those things. We have to remember what really matters is what, what really stages of our life. It's not those external things that we you know, own and we earn and own, but the status of our mind, the status of our personality, how we think, how we talk, and how we behave. Uh, and, and we will make our own uh, judgment about our life at the end of our life. And we will not think about the wealth that we have earned, we will, we will not think about the fame that we have created. And But we will really think whether I am a better person than I was really born into this world. So if you really can have that evaluation about yourself, that I somehow improve myself in my person, in my virtues. Now, I had some some amount of virtues when I was born as a human being, and you are you you got your own virtues. That is why you become a human being. But uh, if you can become happy at the end of the day, that uh, I have I have improved those virtues in my life. Now I am living as a better uh, developed person uh, than I was originally born. So no matter how much fame we have earned, no matter how much wealth you, you have earned, no matter how much you know, status or high rank you, you got in your, in your life, but if you can't be happy about yourself that you are a, a more developed person in your virtues and in your spiritual development than you were originally born, that person can't be happy about himself. So that is what we, we have to remember. So, so it's, it's not the length of the life that is important, but uh, how much, uh, uh, how much the quality, how much virtues uh, that we, we develop in our life. So, if you happen to die in a in a, in a in a young age, that doesn't matter, as long as you are dying as a more developed person than you were born. You may die, you know, living after 100 years, but if you haven't made any progress in your life. No point. 
So that's the wisdom that we have to have. So, <coughs> but today I'm, I'm going, my topic of the talk is how to make a day happy. How to make a single day happy, a day happy. Because <coughs> we learn a lot of uh, teachings of the Buddha and we discuss a lot of, uh, we read a lot. Uh, so in readings, in, 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 in Dhamma talks, uh, we learn that, okay, I have to be mindful, or I have to be virtuous, and I have to you know, develop my mind, I have to meditate, and you learn all those things. When you're in the Dhamma talk, you say, oh, yes, that's really helpful, really wonderful, I have to practice that. Oh, that's also good. And, and when we say ten perfection, yeah, that is also good, I have to practice. And when you listen, you really you know, showing your enthusiasm, other thing, when you go back, Again, in the same way, you wake up early in the morning, you prepare for your work and go to work and do things and drive on the way back, come back home, go go, go for dinner, go do your shopping and come, come home and sleep. <laughs> and again, you go to Dhamma talk, oh, and again, feel interested, yeah, I have to do that, I have to practice that. But ultimately, all these things have to boil down into our actual daily life, the day that we spend in our life. And I was thinking, no matter what kind of you know dharma teachings that we you know try to uh, pass to our devotees, and if you don't uh, teach them the, the tips and techniques, how you can really incorporate practices of mindfulness, practices of generosity, practices of patience, everything into your real um, real uh, routines of your day, and they are going to have the same life, no matter what you teach. Of course, you know, if the wise people will think of a way how to incorporate those things into their life. But I was, I was thinking, why not? I go from one routine to other and go, go all routines and explain how we can uh, spend our every routines of a day uh, practicing with the Buddha's teaching. And from waking up until you go to sleep. And how we can actually incorporate every routines of our day uh, to a Dhamma practice. If you can do that, the whole day, no matter what you do, those things could be part of your spiritual practice. And also, if you can make a one day, uh, spend in a Kamisa Dhamma, and you will be happy, You'll be happier than other days. If you can make a one day happy, if you know how to uh, make a day happy, then automatically your whole life will be happy. I remember a story, you know, one time uh, there was a, there was a monk uh, who, uh, at the time of the Buddha, who ordained and he has complaints about the precepts. And he ordained, he came from a luxurious family, but somehow he, get, he realized the true nature of life and decided to renounce and became a monk. And after he became a monk, he realized that there are many precepts, tropes, many precepts to follow. More than 200 precepts. And he was complaining, how I can remember even 200 precepts, you not to speak about practicing. And too many precepts, and he was making this complaint. The other monks listened to this complaint and reported to the Buddha. And there's one new monk and complaining about the precept, that for him this precept, uh, too many precepts for him to practice. And even he can't remember those precepts. So what he can do? And Buddha invite, uh, asked him to come and call, um, call him. And, and then Buddha asked, I have heard that you are making a complaint. Is it true? Because Buddha will not really admonish any person only after Buddha taking the answer from from the very mouth of that person. That is the Buddha's nature. And he said, yes, sir, yes, sir, I am really having a difficult time to, to practice all those precepts. And there are really many, too, too many to practice. Buddha said, okay, how about if I give you three precepts, would you be able to follow? Yes. It's very easy, you know, three pieces are very simple, very easy to remember and I'm ready. And Buddha asked, are you sure, are you going to practice all these three? If I explain, yes. And the Buddha said, okay, then you don't need to practice all, more, all the precepts more than 200. We just practice three, three precepts. Number one, <coughs> you protect your behavior, your, your, your body. Protect, protect your body from doing all wrong things. Number two, to protect your speech from all from all wrong speeches, and thirdly, you protect your mind from all from bad thoughts. Protect your body, your behavior. Protect your body from from all um, unwholesome doings. Protect your speech from unwholesome speeches. Protect your mind from unwholesome thoughts. 
And we will say, yes, I can. <laughs> when he do this, all these three things, he automatically practice all 200.